This is a double pipe heat exchanger, meaning that you have a pipe inside of another pipe. So you've got basically flow from the hot is going inwards into the cold. There's two main methods that can be used to solve heat transfer, heat exchanger problems. LMTD, log mean temperature difference, and NTU, but you probably aren't gonna get to choose which one you want to use. That is, the problem is gonna choose for you because some problems are much easier to solve with one method than the other. But if you did get to choose, your TA Serenity would always choose LMTD, log mean temperature difference, it's the easier to understand, kind of more straightforward, obvious sort of methods. And also the problems are usually a lot shorter. So she loves that too. Starting off this example problem by just labeling all of my givens on my drawing. And I've got, as expected, both inlet temperatures, 140 degrees and 25 degrees. I have CP, the specific heat for both uh, streams. And I have one outlet temperature. I want my cold fluid to raise from 25 degrees of the inlet to 60 degrees of the outlet. And I have a mass flow rate for that also of 0.2 kilograms per second. For the hot fluid, I have its mass flow rate, but I don't know what the outlet temperature is gonna be. But remember, that's not disqualifying. In order to calculate LMTD, I'm gonna need to know that temperature, but I will be able to solve for it as long as you know one outlet temperature LMTD method is the way to go. And what I'm trying to find for this problem is the length of pipe. You will recognize an LMTD problem because you will know at least one outlet temperature. Heat exchangers are gonna have two different streams of fluids, right, that heat is being exchanged from the hot fluid to the cold fluid. You'll basically always know what the inlet temperatures are going to be, but the outlet temperatures if they are known, that lends itself towards LMTD problems. If your outlet temperatures are unknown, then you're gonna need to do NTU category problem. You don't need to know both outlet temperatures. As long as you know one outlet temperature, that should be enough to use LMTD. You'll be able to solve for the other one if you need it. So in this case, since the hot pipe is in the middle, you've basically got heat flowing outwards from the central hot pipe to the cold flow that is sort of in an annulus, like a ring around the hot flow. So this is a double pipe heat exchanger. In particular, this is a parallel flow heat exchanger. There is another category of counter flow, where instead of the hot and the cold both flowing in the same direction, you could have hot and cold flowing in opposite directions. Usually a counter flow heat exchanger where they go in opposite directions is usually a little bit better, but this problem is parallel flow. The solution method though is basically the same, parallel versus counter flow. So the assumptions that I'm gonna make that are gonna simplify this problem are gonna be uh, steady state operations, meaning that mass flow rate is constant, that the fluid properties are constant, right? Like CP is not changing. Technically CP does change as temperature changes, but I'm just gonna assume a constant value for CP to simplify the problem. And I'm also gonna assume that the problem is well insulated. Basically, I wanna make sure that the amount of heat leaving the hot pipe is exactly the same as the amount of heat gained by the cold pipe. If the cold pipe were also losing heat out to the atmosphere, that would make this problem a lot more complicated. We would have to account for that extra convection term of heat leasing, leaving the system. So we're just gonna assume uh, Q dot C is equal to Q dot H. The main equation for this problem is gonna be Q dot equals U A delta T L M. U is the overall heat transfer coefficient, A the surface area, and delta T L M the log mean temperature difference. But there's two other equations that I'm also gonna have to use for Q, the rate of heat transfer, that is the amount of heat gained by the cold fluid, M dot CP delta T, is equal to the amount of heat lost by the hot fluid, M dot CP delta T for the hot fluid. All three of these Q terms are exactly the same. And the final answer I'm looking for of length, that shows up in these equations in the A term surface area. UA delta T, that area is the surface area of pipe where the hot and cold surfaces meet. And so you might be able to predict that this first UA delta T equation, 
That's the one we're gonna have to come to last because that's where the final answer is. So presumably we're starting with one of the other two. And in fact, if I throw some check marks next to what is known, you can see that we actually know all three terms on this red cold equation. So once we solve for Q on that cold equation, we can figure out uh, the final temperature delta TH in the hot equation. And then once all four temperatures are known, we'll be able to find delta TLM, the log mean temperature difference, which I'll explain more later what that actually represents, right? So then we'll have found Q and delta TLM, and then solving for A with this first black equation, that's gonna be the last step. And this is gonna be a very typical solution strategy for LMTD log mean temperature difference problems where you're using both M dot CP delta T and UA delta T. And the thing that you as a student are most likely to mix up during this problem is delta T, right? There are four different temperatures in this problem and it's really easy to get them mixed up. And so you really have to be extra careful in these problems in making sure you're using the correct temperature at the correct moment. So first we can solve for the rate of heat transfer using the cold system, right? The 0.2 kilograms per second mass flow rate, 4180 CP. And then the 60 minus 25 is the cold outlet temperature minus 25 inlet temperature. This gets us 29.26 kilowatts or 29,260 watts. That is the rate of heat transfer. This value for Q is the same value Q for how much heat is lost by the hot. And then also for Q equals UA delta T, the amount of heat transfer between hot and cold, all three Q values are the same. So for my hot flow, Q dot equals M dot CP delta T, I am rewriting my delta T as hot inlet minus hot outlet. That's different than from the cold temperatures. I did cold out minus cold in. And the reason for this is that I just want my Q term to be an absolute value. So I'm doing the higher temperature minus the lower temperature just to get an absolute value for Q that is the same. If we wanted to actually strictly adhere to sign conventions, usually heat into a system is positive and heat leaving a system is negative. If we kept our outlet minus inlet uh, formula, that would give us a QH of negative 29.26 kilowatts. But it's so much easier to just deal with absolute value. So uh, 140 minus T hot out for the temperature, 0 0.3 and 4310 and then the 29,260 for Q dot. This gives us a hot temperature outlet of 117.4 Celsius. And now starting to write out the third equation, right? Q dot equals UA delta T. This is the rate of heat transfer between the two surfaces, between the two pipes. We've got the 29,260 for Q, 550 for U, which was given, even though it's not in my drawing, it was in the problem statement. You can go back to the beginning of the video and see. Uh, A is the final answer we're looking for. Delta T L M, the log mean temperature difference. So what the heck even is this Delta T L M that I've been saying a million times, but haven't once actually explained to you yet. So log mean temperature difference is required because UA Delta T, this rate of heat transfer is based on the difference in temperature at the point of contact. So if we've got flow of 100 degrees in one pipe and 50 degrees in the other pipe, if those temperatures were constant, then this delta TLM would not be necessary. We would just do 100 minus 50 as a delta T of 50 degrees. But the problem in heat exchangers is that the temperatures are changing. So at the inlet of this heat exchanger, we have 140 minus 25. There's a difference in temperature of 115 degrees at the inlet. But the outlet temperatures are 117 and 60. So there's only a 57 degree difference at the outlet. So there's a difference in delta T, the difference between the hot and cold fluids changes. It's different at different parts of the pipe. So this delta TLM log mean temperature difference is essentially a way to figure out the average temperature difference 
from the inlet to the outlet. And while a straight linear average between those two would get you pretty close to the average, temperatures are not changing linearly. Each of the flow's temperatures is actually changing exponentially, which is where this sort of logarithm, this natural log, helps to compute a more accurate average that actually better represents the rate of change of the two temperatures. And the last important thing to keep in mind that I'll recommend here is that delta T L M is different for different styles of heat exchangers. This is a parallel flow double pipe heat exchanger. And so the equation that's written on my screen now for delta T L M is only useful for parallel flow. If this were a counter flow where hot and cold were going in opposite directions, there would be a, an equation that looks almost the same as this, but some of the like hot and cold inlet and outlet terms are sort of switched and rearranged a little bit. Because what you'll notice is for each pair of temperatures, like in the numerator, we have T hot out minus T cold out. Those are the two temperatures that are right next to each other. That is hot out and cold out are right next to each other on the heat exchanger. And then we've got T hot in minus T cold in, right? The two inlets are right next to each other in the heat exchanger. So that delta T, T hot in minus T cold in, is an actual delta T where heat transfer is actually happening. If this were a counter flow heat exchanger where the hot inlet and cold outlet were next to each other, we would be comparing T hot in minus T cold out. So it's the important part here is not whether it's like inlets or outlets, it's the two temperatures that are right next to each other in the actual physical device get subtracted. So for parallel flow, you compare outlet to outlet and inlet to inlet. But if this were counter flow, it would be outlet to inlet and inlet to outlet would be compared. All right, let's just plug in some numbers. So at the outlet, right, I said this is 117 minus 60, so it's about 57 degrees. And then the two inlet temperatures, 140 minus 25 is 115 degrees. Then in the denominator, we've got a natural log along with these two same terms, the 117 minus 60, which is 57, and divided by the 140 minus 25, which is 115. And when you do all this math, you'll get a delta T LM the log mean temperature difference of 82.89 degrees Celsius. And to double check your answer, this has to be in between your two delta T's. So 57 degrees to 115 degrees, it has to be in between those two numbers. And in general, it should be kind of close to the middle in between them. And in fact, if we did compute the actual average from 57 to 115, Right, those add up to 172, so divided by two, that would be about 86 degrees. So we expect delta TLM to be around 86 degrees. It won't be exactly 86 degrees, just needs to be kind of close to 86 degrees. If we didn't get a temperature kind of near 86 degrees, first thing to check would be see if you made a calculator mistake. The second thing to check would be to make sure you're using the correct delta TLM equation. Remember, there's a separate equation for parallel flow versus counter flow, if you're using the wrong one, that could also result in your temperature not being what you expected. So circling all the way back to our original UA delta TLM equation, we've got Q dot, the 29,260, we've got U that was given, 550, A is the answer we're trying to find, and now we have delta TLM, 82 degrees, and we can get a surface area of 0 0.6418 meters squared. And the surface area of the pipe is basically the uh, outer area of a cylinder, right? That's the point of contact. This is a, an outer pipe outside an inner pipe. So the surface area is the cylinder. So this is going to be circumference times length is going to be the surface area. So pi times diameter times length. So with area known 0.6418, pi times the diameter of 0 0.008 for eight millimeters, gives us a final length of 25.5 meters. Uh, if you're in English units, it's like 80 feet long. So 
that might not be practical to make an 80 foot long heat exchanger, but there's no reason this has to be purely in a straight line. You could actually have these sort of double back sort of snake around, and you could make this about five meters long, stacked five layers tall, where it just snakes back and forth five times. And this way your, your footprint is only closer to around 16 feet long, along with you know each of these snakes, and it'll make your system a little bit taller instead. So the next video to watch that's up on the screen now is gonna be a comparison between a parallel flow system and a counter flow system. So it's still an LMTD problem, but you're gonna actually see how much more efficient the counter flows really is. And spoiler, it's actually not that much.